All right, so last night, late in the evening, right, in the early wee morning hours on the East Coast, the Republican Congress, along with a bunch of Democrats, voted in favor of a two-year funding bill. This is not a budget, okay? It's not technically a budget. The reason that makes a difference is if you don't pass a budget, you can't use reconciliation processes to pass new bills. I discussed this a little bit yesterday, but in order for you to pass a bill under reconciliation, meaning with 51 votes in the Senate, in order for the filibuster not to apply, you have to pass a bill that is budget neutral. Well, that doesn't apply if there is no budget. You cannot have a budget neutral bill if there is no budget. So they essentially passed a funding bill, but no budget. So that prevents them from passing any new legislation that really affects spending. So they can pass something on DACA maybe, but that's about it, right? There will be no further movement on Obamacare. There'll be no further movement on taxes. There'll be no further movement, significant movement on regulation in all likelihood. You know, that's a serious problem. The bigger problem, however, is they just blew out the budget. I mean, blew it out. They, they're spending more money now than Barack Obama was spending. They're spending about the same amount of money, actually, as Obama was spending. They blew out a trillion dollar debt yesterday, a trillion dollar deficit in the budget. They blew a hole in it. Rand Paul wanted to stand up and say something about it. Uh, you know, Rand has a, has a knack for, for standing and, and talking at these times, and that's something you got to appreciate about the senator from Kentucky. Here is Rand Paul saying, listen, you know, we campaign on fiscal responsibility, and then we lie about it. And, you know, the thing is, is we think when Democrats are in charge that the Republicans are the conservative party. The problem is when the Republicans are in charge, there's no conservative party. And that's kind of where we are now. Someone has to stand up and say, you should spend what comes in. We should balance our ledger. And that used to be what it meant to be conservative. But a lot of so-called conservatives lose their mind once it becomes a partisan thing. And they say, oh, we must govern now. So they govern by giving us massive new debt. And I don't think that's good for the country. I think ultimately it threatens our security, not only our external security, but also the internal foundation of the country is threatened by so, so large a debt. And he's exactly right here. The real problem with the debt is not that we're going to go bankrupt immediately. We're still the strongest economy on planet Earth. That means people are going to continue buying our bonds. But one of the problems you have is that over time, as you accrue more and more debt, where are you going to keep getting people to, to buy into that? Right now, our, our, the, the, the American debt to GDP ratio is growing and growing. Uh, so I, I want to look it up right now. The, the United States American debt to GDP ratio, let's see, what is it here in the United States, um, is, let's see, it is 106.1% of the country's GDP. We have a government debt equivalent to more than the entire country GDP. Okay, that is not a good thing. That is not a good thing. Okay, we reached a record low in that number in 1981 under Reagan when our government debt was only 32% of GDP. But that is not a healthy number, okay? If you look at debt to GDP ratio by country, we are, we are starting to climb those charts and they are not good in the slightest, right? In Japan, of course, Japan is basically bankrupt. Their public debt is now 243% of GDP, but China's really low. It's like 23% of GDP because they can just tax the crap out of their own citizens. And, but if you look at some of the more healthy countries like Germany, they have a 70% GDP to debt ratio or debt to GDP ratio. Even France ranks below us. The UK ranks below us. We have been selling our debt at ridiculous rates for a long time. And eventually, that's going to come around to bite you. You can't just borrow on the credit card interminably. In the end, somebody is going to stop lending you that line of credit. When that happens, they're going to have to be austerity measures. Nobody wants to look at that, however, because they're afraid of the political blowback should that happen. Rand Paul suggests that it is hypocrisy for Republicans who talk deficit for years and years and years and then uh, under Obama. And then Trump becomes president and suddenly we stop talking deficit anymore. Now government's taking off, and this new stimulus of deficit spending will be as big as President Obama's stimulus. Don't you remember when Republicans howled to high heaven that President Obama was spending us into the gutter, spending us into oblivion, and now Republicans are doing the same thing. And so I ask the question, whose fault is it? Republicans? Yes. Whose fault is it? Democrats? Yes, it's both parties' fault. You realize that this is the secret of Washington. The dirty little secret is the Republicans are loudly clamoring for more military spending, but they can't get it unless they give the Democrats welfare spending. So they raise all the spending. It's a compromise in the wrong direction. Okay, and he is, he is correct about this. He is wrong, by the way, about military spending as a general matter. This is one of the problems with Rand Paul is that Rand is very anti-military spending. I'm fine with the idea that we don't have to radically 
revamp our military spending and, and, ja and jigger it upward in any, in any tremendous way. But Rand actually wants to cut it tremendously because he thinks that we should just bring our troops home from Afghanistan, for example, which is quasi-delusional. But when he talks about the fact that Republicans have ceased to care about the budget, he's 100% correct. Here's what is in this bill. Okay, according to ABC News, the two-year budget deal would lift caps on defense and non-defense spending by $300 billion over two years. It includes $6 billion to, file, to fight the opioid crisis, $5.8 billion for child care development block grants, $4 billion for veterans' medical facilities, $2 billion for medical research, $20 billion to augment existing infrastructure programs, $4 billion for college affordability. Is college going to get more affordable? No, it's not going to get more affordable. The measure would extend government funding at current levels until March 23rd to allow lawmakers to finalize details on the spending in a separate measure. Lawmakers would also raise the nation's debt limit into 2019, so we'll have no more government shutdowns until past the congressional elections, which was part of the goal here. Jazz Shaw at Hot Air is fulminating over this. He says, listen, everyone who's fighting for conservative principles, okay, this means that you no longer get to talk about fiscal conservatism in the future. You can't talk about fiscal conservatism, about fiscal responsibility, when you're blowing out budgets to the tune of trillion dollar deficits. With an entirely Republican Congress, by the way. They told me if I didn't vote for Trump, we'd get trillion dollar deficits and DACA. And apparently they were right. I mean, this is pretty amazing stuff. And there are a bunch of fiscal conservatives of days past who voted for this thing. Right? Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan. Senator Ted Cruz. Right? Both of these people voted for the new budget. Cruz said he had to for the disaster funding. Most of the disaster funding had already taken place. It's like $51 billion of disaster funding had already been funded. This adds a bunch of boondoggle on top of it. Paul Ryan was interested in raising the, the military spending. Okay, well then get your own people in line, sir. Then get your Republicans in line. There are 16 Republicans who didn't vote for it, including Rand Paul and Mike Lee. Right? Mike Lee was really angry because he said this process is completely corrupt, which it is. The way appropriations are supposed to be done are not in the 700-page omnibus packages that are rolled out at midnight and no one reads. That's not the way this is supposed to be done. Appropriations packages are supposed to be done by apartment and by department. The way it was supposed to work is that if you have a Department of Defense bill, you have a defense spending bill, a defense authorization bill. Then you have a health and human services authorization bill. Then you have a commerce authorization bill. Then you have a Department of Education authorization bill. And then we can debate what should be in and what should be out of each one of those bills. The House, by the way, 100 days ago, passed 12 authorization bills for each of the departments. The Senate didn't move on any of them. Instead, the, the Senate moved into the, side, the back room and they negotiated an omnibus package and they said you get to vote up or down. That is not a way to be fiscally responsible. But Republicans don't care about that anymore. You know why Republicans don't care? Here's the dirty little secret. The dirty little secret is that Trump's populism works because politically speaking, Trump is recognizing a truth that fiscal conservatives are going to have to come to grips with. That is, voters lie. Okay, voters say they want fiscal conservatism. Voters say they want cuts. Voters say they want the government to spend within its limits. But the minute you say to voters, guys, we're going to have to restructure Social Security, voters balk, and then they vote Democrat. In other words, we like to pretend that we're the child who's capable of delayed gratification. There's a very famous delayed gratification experiment where you can actually tell IQ of children in a very basic way through this experiment. If you take a four-year-old and you say to them, I'm going to put this cookie in front of you right now, you can either eat that cookie right now or if you wait three minutes, you will get a second cookie. Right, you get two cookies. Kids who have lower IQs tend to pick the cookie up and eat it right away. Kids with higher IQs tend to sit there and wait for the second cookie. Okay, well, we all like to pretend that we're the kid with the second cookie, that we're, we're the higher IQ kids. In reality, we are not. We like to think of ourselves as smart, but we're dumb. So when it comes to actual, like we, we say, yeah, let's cut the spending. But the minute that it comes to something we want, then all of a sudden we don't care about the spending anymore. And we're always saying it's an emergency situation. John Cornyn yesterday, he ripped into Paul. He said, I know he wants to make a point. He has that right. I agree with many of his concerns about deficits and debt, but we are in an emergency situation. When's the last time we weren't in an emergency situation? When's the last time we actually had a full-throated debate about government spending and we weren't in a quote-unquote emergency situation? Not as far as I can recall. Last time I remember was when Bush was president. When Obama was president, then you know we had significant debates over spending. The budgets that the Democratic Congress passed were, were abysmal. Once Republicans gained control of the Congress, it's been emergency measures all the way down. Here's the problem. Okay, if you're never willing to shut down the government, if you're never willing to actually have these hard-headed contacts, if you're never willing to actually have conversations about what needs to stay and what needs to go, you're never going to get to anything remotely approaching fiscal responsibility. Just a disaster. And the fact that so many supposed fiscal conservatives are looking the other way on this demonstrates that some of the Tea Party was a lie. That there are a lot of people who are Tea Partiers who are saying they wanted lower government spending, but they only wanted lower government spending when they thought Democrats were doing it. The minute it's Trump in charge and the Republicans in charge, they're willing to look the other way because, after all, tax cuts and defense spending 
And if we have to get those things, then I guess we can blow out spending like it's, like it's 2009. Just ridiculous. A ridiculous deal. There is no reason that Republicans should have signed off on it. Uh, and it is a disgrace to a Republican Party that does, it no longer represents anything. It no longer represents anything that, that, that means anything when it comes to government, when it comes to smaller government or government limitations. Just terrible.